26 Speed Dakota here and today's project we're going to be replacing the front brakes in this 2004 Mazda 6. It's a pretty easy process. I'm also going to be doing the rears but that's going to come in a different video. Um, so yeah let's get started. So stuff you're going to need. Obviously you're going to need new brake pads and obviously you're going to need new rotors if you need to replace the rotors. I've already done the one side and you can see that the rotors are all nice and grooved. A nice big lip here. They're just generally worn out. I did the brakes probably four years ago and didn't replace the rotor, so now they're time to be replaced. So, you need a big pair of channel locks if you don't have a C-clamp. For some reason I can't find mine. A uh, big screwdriver, big felt screwdriver. I believe this is a number two. I can't see. Um, if that doesn't work, you're gonna need an impact driver which the other side did need it. Um, three inch ratchet, breaker bar. I like the breaker bar to get the caliper mounting bracket bolts loose. You're going to need a 17 millimeter socket to take the caliper mounting brackets off, a 12 millimeter to take the brake line bracket off, and you are going to need a an eight millimeter hex bit, and that is for taking the caliper off. You're going to need a wire brush or your trusty little wire brush to clean stuff up. A little bit of solvent or mineral spirits. Um, disc brake quiet. Now you don't need this. You can use your silicone brake lubricant to uh, put on the back of the pads. I do a lot of brake jobs so I can warrant the use of this. But uh, it's just a little packet of brake lube you can get if you're only doing one brake job. And Andy sees, and also you can get a little packet of that if you're only doing one brake job. Like I said, I work on a lot of cars, and so I use that kind of stuff all the time. Another thing, a little hammer, a big hammer over there. Just your general hand tools, but we've gone over the specifics. This side's already done on the passenger side, so let's move on to the driver's side. Alright, so first things first, after you jack it up and get the wheel off, there is a 12 millimeter bolt here in the back. And you need to get that off because that holds the brake line onto the strut. And you cannot get the brake caliper off without removing it. Ouch. And I just whacked my finger. The other side was stubborn too, so I'm not expecting this side to be too much greater. It wasn't anything really out of the ordinary, but it wasn't exactly simple either. Okay, so once you got that removed, pull the brake line out of the bracket, just kind of let it hang loose. Now there's a little cap on the back of the top mounting their caliper slider. We're going to put our 8mm hex bit in, and then we're going to remove the caliper. So there's only one slide pin on this design. Some of the older Hondas were like this too. What I like to do is twist and pull. That makes it slide out a little easier. Okay, so now what we do is we slide the caliper over. Try to get as much slack on the brake line as possible. And we slide it back and out. Like that. And we're just going to set it up and out of the way. Okay, so now there's these two little clips, these two little spring clips. These are very important. Don't lose these. These don't usually come with the brake pads. So make sure that you save them. Now we can pull the brake pads out. These ones aren't too bad. The next step, we loosen the two caliper mounting bracket bolts. I already cracked these loose, but these are 17 millimeter. Top. 
Tem uma lá no bottom. Pull that guy off. Now we need to get the rotor loose. Now I'm going to assume that the screwdriver won't take it off, which I'd be correct in my assumption. So now we have to use a impact driver. So the way I like to do this is I like to turn and hammer the back. Take it. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I'm twisting it in the direction of rotation, which is loosen. You take the hammer and you hammer the back of it. It's almost like an impact gun, but works slower. <laughs> Sometimes that's necessary. If they don't come undone, period, then you might just have to drill them out. These are not really a big deal to put back in because when you put the wheel against it, it holds the rotor in. This is kind of convenient for doing the brake job. Oh, this rotor is kind of ugly on the back side here. All right, so now that we got the side all disassembled. We're gonna start the cleaning process and move on from there. All right, so now first things first, we're going to grab our this brake quiet. We're going to spray it all over the backs of the brake pads. Don't be afraid to be liberal with this. Okay. Now that we're done that, we're going to let it sit and tack while we clean up the hub and surfaces like that. Okay, so now we're going to take our trusty wire brush, we're going to clean, clean around the hub surface like this. I mainly just have to get around the lip here. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can use the, take the caliper mounting bracket here. Let's aim down just a bit. We're gonna take and we're gonna pop these clips off. And we're gonna take our trusty wire brush. We're gonna clean the area where this the brake pads and the clips go. They're all nice and clean. And we put it all back together again. Okay. So you see our pads here are a little worse for wear. I just noticed that. All right, so let's get her all back together. Okay, so now what we can do is we can take these clips, shiny new ones, Pop them into place. Now I like to use the Raybestos pads, they typically come with everything. The Thermal Quiet Wagner ones do not. And I don't usually like those ones, I find that the quality is kind of crappy on them. So, there we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our paper towel, we're going to clean up the slider. If there's any pitting or anything on this, then make sure that you clean it off with a wire wheel or a wire brush or something, make sure it's all down to bare metal again. Because that will cause this to hang up. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to get the rotor cleaned up and installed. Now that we've cleaned up the hub, we can clean up the rotor. So 
basically take a cloth and put a little bit of solvent on it and then try not to put it everywhere just on the surface so what we need to do is we need to get the rust inhibitor off Both sides. Try not to touch the surface of the rotor once you got it all cleaned off. Now if you don't do this, you can gunk up the brake pads really badly and make all kinds of smoke. So you just, we just want to make sure that the surface is as clean as possible. Okay. To install the rotor, what we're going to do. I'm just going to put a little anti-seize around the lip of the hub here. I like to put a little on the studs. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our rotor by the edge of it. <sighs> Slide it on. We're going to take our retaining screw, dab it with a little bit of anti-seize, not too much. Alright, and now... Take the bottom screw and do the same thing. You don't need to use the impact driver to put these back on. Because then you'll never get them off. Alright. So now, we take our... If we move down here, take our... It's too far down. Our caliper mounting bracket. And we're going to put our anti-seize all over the friction points where the pads touch and this will keep the pads moving smoothly and then we can bolt it on so what we need to do is we need to take the bolts to have a little anti-seize on them this stuff is your best friend whenever you're doing anything to do with brakes Up. check the top and we double check the bottom all done okay so now before we put the pads in take the caliper and flip it upside down I don't know if you can see that take our big pair of channel locks open them to full extension and squeeze Push the piston all the way back in. There we go. 
Once it bottoms out, don't push it any harder. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to put the brake pads in. Alright, so as far as what side is what, the one with the little squealer tab in here, like that. That one goes in the back. So the one goes right here. Okay, so before we reassemble, we need our, I remember where I put the damn thing. Silicone brake lubricant, which I've actually run out, but I got another tube over there. I put a fairly liberal coating of it on there. There's a couple of grooves in here and that's those are called grease grooves so make sure that those grease grooves are full. Wish a caliper could stick and bind. So now what we do is we oh I forgot something. So before we move it any further what we want to do is we want to put these clips in. So there's one at the top and one at the bottom and there's two little holes in the brake pads. Now these are going to tend to spring out like this, so just be prepared for it. Okay, and then the other one. So this is a bit of a balancing act here, so... That's one thing you got to worry about with this style is the pad having to pop out all the time. So put the clip in. Now what I like to do is I like to bring the caliper in just a bit to hold the the brake pads in so they don't pop back out again. Slide it down. All done. That was only a real pain in the ass. Now what we do is we take our pin, there we go, we put a little coating of silicone grease on it. Now you can't use regular grease, you can only use the silicone grease because it's high temperature for the brakes and it won't swell the seals up and cause the brakes to bind up. Okay, so now we put our eight millimeter on. Now remember, because we squeezed the piston back, that this thing's going to stick out a ways now. Take the cap and we sit it on the back, push it in, all done. So now the last step in the process is we take our brake line. And we sit it back in the
so now let's that bracket. All right, so now we gotta put the wheel back on. <laughs> These wheels look direction specific, so pay attention to that if you ever want to swap them around. Not that it really matters, it just looks bad. Let's go forward. see too well but you need to pump the brakes a couple of times till the pedal's firm and then we can go double check. What we do is we come and we spin the wheel make sure it spins relatively free which in this case it does. Now disc brakes drag a little bit so it don't expect it to run super freely this is just perfect.